Well, new tonight, News Nation is taking an in-depth look at wealth in America. And there are two aspects to our story tonight. First, a new research study examining 50 years of so-called trickle-down economics and whether cutting taxes for people at the very top, whether that really does benefit everyone as the theory goes. But first, we're digging into the racial wage gap in this country and why some people tell us that despite a rise in net worth, they are not feeling that boost. News Nation's Brian Netton live for us in Florida tonight with stories from real people, a story you won't see anywhere else tonight. Brian. Rob, this was such an interesting story to shoot. There is a new Federal Reserve report out that shows that minority wealth grew between 2016 and 2019, but then the pandemic hit. Sharonda Day was making six figures with her successful bakery and catering business that supplied desserts to Miami sporting arenas. Now she's barely making it, trying to pivot and cook up a new business idea, making organic tea. What happened when the pandemic hit for you? So when the pandemic hit for me, um, reality put on like six inch pumps and was like, so what are we going to do? And so then you find yourself here in the midst of a pandemic and you're like, damn. This is what bottom feels like, right? Or this is what this bottom feels like. And you're trying to figure out how to climb yourself back to that momentous place you felt at the beginning of 2016. Black and Hispanic wealth grew faster than white wealth pre-pandemic between 2016 and 2019, according to the Federal Reserve. Black net worth grew by 33 percent. Hispanic net worth grew by 65 percent. And white net worth grew by 3 percent. Is there a shift? Do you feel that? All right, so there's a shift, right? But I don't know that I don't know that the shift has had the magnitude that you would feel it, like that you would feel the earth shake under your feet because black-owned businesses are shaking it. The growth numbers on their surface sound good for minorities, and they are. But you have to look at the big picture. There is still a massive wealth gap that exists between minority families and white families. Those percentage increases in wealth among minorities, well, look what happens when you convert them to total median wealth. The median wealth for black families is just $24,000. For Hispanic families, it's $36,000. And for white families, it's much, much more, $188,000. When looking at this positive data, how important is it to consider the big picture that the wealth gap is still so large? I think it, it's important, right? We've, uh, we need to understand more about why that wealth gap is so large. And some of our work at our center has traced that back to historical inequities. But I think it's important, though, to focus on that growth as well, because far too often there have been, um, uh, there's a, been a focus on the deficits, right? And I think it's important to really applaud and to understand why wealth grown over this time period. Thanks. Kristen Kitchen grew up poor but is now living her dream. She owns the Dunn's Josephine, a boutique hotel in Miami. She's skeptical the average black family actually felt their net worth grow from 2016 to 2019, but she's optimistic about the future. I think that this, you know, this moment with the pandemic and George Floyd, that there's, there's a moment in America where maybe things will turn around, maybe net worth will grow in a, in a, in a number where it's not 17,000 to 23,000, but you know, 23,000 to 100,000, to where we would get to 50% of the net worth of the average white person. Sharonda and her family thought they were on their way to that, but that was before the pandemic and before the shutdowns. How hard is it now? Okay, so how hard is it now? I, for me, here's my truth. That depends on what kind of headspace I want to put the word hard in. Is it easy? No, it is not. Do I make it look like it's easy? Probably a little more than it is. But when you go from getting $1,000 invoices on a weekly basis to selling tea and maybe getting 10 or $20 per order, that gap? is a hard gap to fill, right? I don't care who you are, that's a hard gap. Because when I make that 10 or $20, I have a choice. Do I take this and try to put it back into the business to drum up more business, or do I pay the rent? 
So many families struggling right now and having to make those tough choices. And you have to remember with that Federal Reserve report that just came out, uh, it showed increases in wealth between 2016 and 2019. They have not released an updated report that will show uh, what happens when you bring the pandemic into all of that. Live in Miami. Brian Enton, News Nation. And so many just like her. Brian, thank you. Let's talk about the trickle down now. A new study shows that the trickle down theory didn't really trickle down as intended. The report done out of the London School of Economics and King's College London spanned 18 countries, including the U.S. and the U.K., over the last 50 years. So what are the results, you ask? Well, they found tax cuts for the rich only benefited the individuals who were directly affected and did little to promote jobs or growth. In fact, the study showed the large tax cuts for the rich led to higher income inequality. The report ended in 2015, well before the pandemic began. But one of the authors thinks that his findings are relevant now. In a recent interview, he said, quote, policymakers shouldn't worry that rising, raising taxes on the rich to fund the financial costs of the pandemic will harm their economies, end quote.